Yeah? The whole thing has failed. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah? And therefore, that becomes incredibly valuable. Yeah? Yeah. So, and then, like, the same thing that would be terrible news to you, you're not going to get is a hallelujah. Yeah? It's just, it's, is to think that you're not going to get it, that, that hasn't changed. But one reaction was, that fucking sucks. And the other reaction is, hallelujah. Yeah? Because it's always about us. Not us as Paul, but us as what we are. Nothing precedes us. Yeah? Yeah, so... I mean, I've been inspired by stuff that... You know, so many people come up to you earlier on when I was speaking in AA... And they say, I really love what you said. And then they explain it. And that's not what you were meaning at all when you were saying it. You do not remember having that meaning come up. <laughs> and after a while, you have five people say this about the same thing, different. Oh, I can't believe. And who, you don't want to rain on their parade. It's a fuck. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's working. You know what I mean? I mean, seriously. Yeah. It's just like it's, it's not the, it's, it's the hearing of it. You always are the dominant thing. If you had a master that was dead, which is fortunate, sir, when you're the real master, you know, mm -hmm. you had him dead and you believed, oh, I would do anything the master says and stuff like that. And he appeared or she appeared to you and said, hey, you don't have to do shit. I bet you you'd start meditating 15 minutes later because you're the fucking master. Bottom line, yeah? It either that or this. You are, yeah? You can pronounce all your stuff, but the biggest aspect of the relationship with the teacher is you. Yeah? Yeah. So let's just be clear about it. Yeah? People will say, I watch it. I tell people, you say there's nothing to do, and if you leave the room, they're doing fucking something. You know what I mean? They start talking, everyone... Oh, I think he meant, no, I didn't mean that. Uh, it's the, no, no, there's nothing fucking to do. You're going to do a lot of shit. But the absolute fact is there's nothing that you're going to do. See, like we described the dreaming. Everything is happening, but nothing ever happened. Yeah? Everything is happening. It's like running water is running. Yeah? But... Water didn't happen. It's watering, yeah? So, yes, everything is happening, but nothing's happened. Nothing becomes a fact. It's an appearance. Everything. You're the fact. You're giving everything all the meaning it has. People here are pronouncing they're into the Course of Miracles. Fucking listen to it. That's what it says. You give everything all the meaning it has. Yeah? Yes. What does that mean? You know it inside, yeah? Whatever you come in contact with, you give it a meaning, yeah? That's what nude is the message. What nude is the message isn't the hearing of it, it's the hearer of it. The hearer of it has nuded the message. The hearing of it is working. The hearer is nuded, yeah? The hearing of the message is the alive transmission. The hearer of the message is still death, stillborn. It's neutered. It's dead. Yes? And then it's now it's something that you understand. Yeah. So you're not going to get it. It's great. Great news. Then you can really enjoy the day. Yeah? And yet you live right now. I forgot that rainbow. Because there's something else happening. Yeah? That's the beauty of it. You appreciate stuff, but you don't still frame it. You don't take a picture of it because it's, it's, cons it's a mural. It's a fucking mural. It's not individual little parts that you string together with a narrative. It's a mural. Everything is happening. Everything is dreaming. That's why we don't use the term dream, because dream sounds like a thing. Yes? A dream. No, it's dreaming. There's not a dream. There is not a dream. There's dreaming. But there is not a dream. 
There's not a thing called a dream. There's an activity dreaming. It has never turned into a dream. The dream isn't what's dreaming. It's dreaming. It's an activity. Yeah? No beginning, no end. No front, no back. No up, no down. It just goes the way it goes. Yes? You're, it's That which feels like it's swimming in it has a pay scale that's quite limited. This to us, with that limitation, it's indescribable. It's incomprehensible. It's unknowable. You're never going to experience it because you are it. Yeah? It's a whole different fish. It's not like something, okay, I got this and now I'm going to work on it. No. Yeah? It's a very disarming message. It, you put down all the fucking, the sword, take the little fucking derringer out of here. The car, you put it all down. Yeah? And you see the emperor with no clothes. And then after that, no matter how great the wardrobe it has, you see the emperor with no clothes when it's wearing clothes. Yeah? Yeah. The gig is up, so to speak. You've seen it. And there is a convincing. There is a being convinced. Yeah? There's a being convinced that you don't need to get into a moment. You've never been out of a moment. You're convinced thoroughly about that. Yeah? So much shit is put to rest. It's just put to rest. Yeah? And therefore... You, your head, you, 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 th you think your head moves. The head moves the interest and attention. It's always sending it around the corner for another half an hour, on and on and on and on. And then you're hoping to feel presence when that which is the presence, the interest and attention has been put to work. You know, the mental state is sending it on another chore. Yeah, it's when that's exhausted, then that, when, it's, when the attention and interest is undirected, that's presence. Yeah? It's presence. It's not aimed. It doesn't have any intent. It's not, you know, moving this. It's just there, hovering. And the, you sense it. Yeah? And then the mental state that's moving up and down doesn't imply that it's you moving up and down. It's just the mental state. Yeah? There's no up and down in everything and everywhere. Yeah? There's no location that is left to another location. Every location is everywhere. Yeah? There's no center of everywhere. Everywhere is the center. Yeah? It disturbs the mental logic. But the mental logic, while you're in it, it seems like it makes sense. But if you see it, it's insane. Completely insane. Yeah? And it's not of you. So you're not going to have the relief. You, you are what you're going to be relieved of. Yeah? That which is hoping to get the relief, that's what you're going to be relieved of. You are. You're, there's going to be a loss of interest in you. It's just going to migrate, and you won't even follow the birds. You won't. You won't give a story about how the bird stayed in this place for so long. You lose the whole interest in all that. You're just here, yeah, now, because you can't be anywhere else, truly. Yeah, There's, that's the great wisdom of no escape. You can't escape from an imaginary place, yeah? I tell you, I swear, in this life, I was a true devotee to escape. My vehicle wasn't spiritual practice, it was shooting cocaine. I believed, humbly and not so humbly, when I shot cocaine, it was a sacrament. It was a religious event. My girlfriend would have people, people would show up and I'd be, she'd like, no, like you were in a church. He's, he's fucking, you know, taking his Eucharist, you know, like shooting up. It was a religious uh, adventure for me. I believed that I could put my body in a point of dying and there would be a, at least a 30 second time when the body was expiring that I'd still be there and that would be it. Yeah, I believed that, I did. And I put a lot of effort into it. And I, we, we had orchestrated uh, overdoses, basically. 
to see what would happen. And you know what? You can't get out of an imaginary place, especially as an imaginary thing. Yeah? Now, I could have doubt about my spiritual devotion, but I have no doubt about the devotion I had with drugs. And I don't see the difference, really. I don't. I do not believe anyone escapes from here. I don't. Yeah? People much better than us have tried, and you keep seeing them, don't you? Yeah. So, I hope the satsang helps, really, to, to, uh, to lower your targets, yeah? And just enjoy what's available now. Not looking at every moment as a stepping stone to a bigger, better moment and some final fucking conclusion that's already said and done now. You're in the conclusion. Yeah? You're, the fact of what you are has already been concluded. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're before everything. You are the seeing of what you're not. Everything that can be seen, felt, tasted, touched, thought about is not you. Yeah, you're not of appearance. You're not of conceptuality. You're not of any of that. Yeah? It's unknown to you because you're busy being it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'll tell you, a friend of ours here has had a similar problem. Uh, and as an observation, my head was fucked up. I was a very disturbed character. Not in a violent way, just really fucked up. Yeah. Very emotionally uh, adolescent, shut down, disassociated. Yeah, completely. Getting run over twice. I spent a lot of alone time in hospital beds and not feeling like people could relate. Yes? Because people would visit me, but they would leave and I'd be there for months. Yeah? And the sense of powerlessness was so unbelievable, they just came and got me, took me to operating rooms, operate on me. I had no idea what's going on. And the only way I found out what happened was seeing where the bandages were placed. Really, no idea. I just had no say in the matter. Just, just talk about powerless. It was sort of intense. And then going through uh, the point where you couldn't take it anymore, yet more kept coming, blew my mind. I blew my fucking mind. I was this one time, I was in the intensive care, because I had a long operation. This intensive care, it was like a nightmare, really. There was all these beds, yeah? And there was a wall that went through, and then there was beds on the other side. And there was a place where you could turn from one side to the other. And at this side, there was a, a very well-lit, like, little theater with uh, shower curtains there, and against the wall was the nurse's thing. And I was in one of the beds, and uh, you know, the only person that could see me for a half hour was my sister. Yes, she was my, she was the, the advocate, yeah? She was making decisions for me, really. So I came to, and I'm laying in this, this thing, and people are screaming, it's like fucking crazy, a lot of shit. And then suddenly there's this big uh, excitement and these two people get brought in on gurneys and there's a lot of blood and he could, I could see them being put into the area with the well light and all the nurses were very excited and doctors came and a lot of blood and they, they must have been in a car accident or something. And so I'm just sitting there, I can't move because I'm this truly disabled. I mean, I can't move. So I'm just looking at this, and then suddenly the doctors come, stop right at my bed, you know, this side, and they meet the parents right there. And I'm like a, a fly on the wall. No one's noticing me. There's no attention at all to me, but I'm quite aware, and they have to break the news that one of the people is dead. One of the, these, this parents, their son died. 
that the other one was still worth on it. I couldn't fucking believe it. It was too bear unbearable. I just cracked once again. Just cracked. I couldn't believe I could. There was nothing that left to crack, but it, something cracked. That next morning, and no, they walked away. This big drama. No one knew I was the fly on the wall. Just like nothing there. So that that ends. And then I had that was a real heavy. You know, I just said fuck it. I mean, I just and I'd said fuck it many times, but I was just so destroyed. So my mother, my sister came in, because you could have a visit half an hour, one person. You know, when you're in this intensive care, and then I try to explain to her, I can't fucking take it. I've had it, you know, just I, the thing, it, the thing had been broken and I felt this is it, but it just kept happening more and more. It's just incredible. I actually had absolutely no say, none. Talk about powerless, completely powerless. Couldn't move from my head down, basically. You know, a broken shoulder, everything was broken here. And I'm just, uh, just unbelievable. So. Yeah, a lot was revealed then, a lot. It didn't come hand in hand in, into effect till later, but there was a lot that was uh, revealed. Well, how old were you? Hmm? How old were you? 28 at that time. So, uh, man, we have a, you have the gift of hearing satsang. Things can be altered without huge trauma. Huge. The dark, it's, we had a joke the other day about the dark night of the soul. It's very nice that it's a singular night. It doesn't say the dark nights of the soul. It's the dark night. I mean, there's grace and there's mercy here. And you should, it's nice to recognize it when it's a, right now, you know. This may sound like just another satsang, but satsang itself has got a juice. It's a very powerful healing, and it does a lot of its work with no effort or thought. You just sit and hear, and things that were seen one way will be seen another way. And things that, didn't, that made sense to you but didn't go anywhere will make a very, very clear sense and will become a foundation. Yes? a foundation that will be relied on, dependable, and you can rest assured. And the thing to see is what you're not, really. Instead of using it to look for everything else, just see what you're not. I remember when I got run over and I was in the hospital and I came to fine, first, first time I came to, I felt that like life, like a candle that was super almost out. You know what I mean? It didn't have much oomph. I felt like the, the merest little breeze would put it out. Yes? Then there was the body, which felt totally fucking stunned. And then I could hear the head like it was above me, yapping, but not that loud. But I could see it was a distinct, a distinct, activity that was not of me. It was fucking obvious. It was fucking, it was like there was a speaker and something from somewhere else was broadcasting through the speaker. It wasn't connected to me. It wasn't plugged into me. It was from some other thing and it was like yapping away like it always did. It was mind boggling. I felt this thing because you know, there is that energy, you know, prana, the life force. Most of us don't feel it because it's on. It's got some vitality, but when it's very, very low, you can really feel the lowness of it, yeah? When it's almost ready to go out, you can tell. It's a very somber recognition. And then, uh, so I'm just here to tell you, that which is yapping and talking to you as you isn't, yeah? And you can see it because you are not a thing. You're not. You're way before that. Yeah? Hmm. 
and nothing really has to change much. It's just a shift of interest and attention. It, all it needs is 50.0001 moved over, and that which seems loud won't be. Yeah. That which filled the room won't. That which stuck its hand up first won't be recognized. Yes? You'll be hearing all the activity, but you won't be listening to it. It's hugely different. Yes? Hugely. You're destined to hear it because you're awake. Yeah? No one chooses their fucking mental stream, I don't believe. Yeah? A lot of times you, you would love not to be able to pay attention to it, but because of the light that we are, we're awake to what's happening. Like it or not, yeah? But at the same point, you can be awake to that light. Not the light that's shining on everything else and bringing it to, into appearance and into recognition, but you could actually rest in the light itself while everything is being brought into appearance and recognition. You can. You, the, percent, the interest and attention can be moved. You don't move it, because that would be a interest in self once again, but it can be moved, yeah? And that which seemed impossible will be quite assured. You'll just be chilled out, yeah? Yeah, and more will be revealed. You're not asking for anything. And you probably won't get much unless you have a seat assignment to talk about shit. Then stuff gets revealed. It's never because of you, it's because of us. Yes? Like the core, you know. You know, in AA, we, some people say uh, in the book, it says, uh, you be sure that you have it to give it away. But I believe if you're willing to give it away, you have it. That's how I feel. I do. Yeah? Yeah? So, yeah, we had a wonderful day today, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope everyone did, and uh, let's just this momentum build, it'll have some power, yeah? It will. I've seen this before. I've seen it with the things in Toronto, a momentum. When I used to do the talks early on, after I did like a string of talks, there would be a big wave that would be produced. And then I'd watch its effects for the next three or four months. So it was pretty cool. Now it, it, does, it doesn't happen like that anymore. Now it's just nothing, which is cool too. Just, yeah. But at the beginning, it would be a big build up, and then I could see its effects the, the next few months. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. If you hear, you've heard us, YouTube and stuff. We've given you the schematics of how we see it. Yeah? You can agree or disagree, but that's what we present. We present that the mental activities, major uh, move is to claim. Yeah? So what it claims isn't brought about by it. Yeah? It's brought about by the consciousness and contact, yeah? whatever you want to call it. And through conscious contact, the mental state arises and claims what it was brought into contact by us, by what we are, yeah? And then it claims that to support its narrative. And it, base, it builds its whole story on the claiming of the I am, basically, as a representation of you, that you and the I am are synonymous. You as Paul and the I am are synonymous, and they're not, yeah? So every day the I am is giving validity to the Paul. Paul has no fucking legs to stand on. Everything it stands on, it hasn't made. It stands on a, another foundation of I am to do its little number of Paul, yes? And if you look at it, it's of time. The whole magic trick is based on time. It's I was Paul, I will be Paul, therefore I am Paul. It never arrives at the immediacy, it goes about things. So I was, I will be, therefore I am. Yes? Because right now it doesn't emit any light. It's empty husk. 
It's like the shade on a lamp. You see the light through the shade, and in this case, the shade has self-centeredness and thinks it's the source of the light. Yet it isn't, it's a shade, yes? But when you're outside of it, it sure seems like there's light coming through the shade, yeah? But what you are is the bowl, so to speak, yeah? But you, that which sees the shade as the light source, is an idea that comes after. And when that idea is hatched, it says it was before. So now, instead of looking from the bulb through the shade, you're looking in an imaginary position outside, looking through the shade and thinking there is no light or bulb. It's the shade. Yes? This is just checking things out. This is a bizarro world. In this bizarro world, yeah, you're trying to know what you are with what you're not. Yeah? We're at that dinner table and we're facing the wrong way. Seriously. Yeah, we're, the dinner's there, it's already served, everything's so, but you're like, where's the fucking dinner? When I'm never going to get the, all this anxiety, I'm not going to get, it's right there. All you have to see is tap and is have the, you don't even have to move. The grace will just turn the chair around. You don't have to do shit. Just, oh, wait, wait, whoa. Yeah. So, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, and I'm happy, I'm, uh, you know, I take into great consideration, even though we joke around a lot, you've come from a long, far places, and I really respect that uh, you are willing to pay your money to come here, yeah? And, uh, yeah, because it's nice when the message is honored, yeah? Sometimes I speak at places where, mm, you know, It's almost a, it's that idea of pearls before swine. You wish in one level that you didn't say anything, because then when they're ready to find out, it would be great to hear. Yeah, but it seems sometimes because the information world, people are getting so much information, uh, and uh, it's almost like no information. There's just so much information. You can go to a YouTube, you know, non-duality page, this page, and have a brief little like Wikipedia summary and then think you know non-duality, which is unknowable. It's unknowable, yeah? Because you can't see anything other than through the two glasses, which non-duality negates. How are you going to see that which is being negated by that which you want to see? <laughs> it's insane. It's truly insane. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I understand non-duality. No, you don't. No one does. That's the great news. <laughs> we understand duality. Yes, that one we can see. But you don't understand non-duality. No fucking way. <laughs> Let me tell you about non-duality. No, please not. Please don't. Please save your breath. I don't want to hear about non-duality. I'd like to hear about duality. Yeah, I would. Because that's it. You want to, the real knowledge of this is the knowledge of what you're not. <laughs> That's the knowledge we're presenting. And you may think I, it's just the same like every other people giving the message. Well, if you don't see that, I, don't, I disagree with you. We're not saying, we're not trying to affirm a state, we're negating something, yeah? Not denying it, negating it. Just looking at it from, what you, from where you are, from what you are. Look at that which is saying it's always looking. Look at that from what you are and let the truth arise. Yeah. A lie needs to be repeated tons of times. The truth needs to be heard. Yes, it goes a long way. And so... For, for me, when I heard this message, it was like an unspoken yes, I swear, I remember it. And then I heard it another way, and I said, this is like knowledge before knowledge, yes? And then over the years, I've come to a conclusion, just for the talks, that it's like the last answer, yeah? Which is such a beautiful answer, because it's taken any 
urge or need for any other answer away, especially this topic. I have not, I do not think about spirituality, whatever you call it, ever, never. If you took my blood, there'd be no signs of spirituality in it. 0. 0.000, seriously, completely lost interest in it. Yeah, when I hear people talking about levitation, so what, you know? I can levitate off a chair three inches, yeah. Yeah, what's, what's that doing, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I can warm my body when I'm cold. I got insulated jackets for that. You know, I live in a world I can have an insulated jacket. It may, it may be nice, but I, it doesn't seem, I'd just rather travel lighter every moment of the day based on the fact that it could be heavy. Yeah, so I'd, I'm, I'm all for the lighter side. Yeah, and there's certain things you need to be clear about. You attempting to travel lighter is an aspect of heaviness. It's just that simple. You got to get it. Yeah. You're, it's sort of like we say, you know, there's a great party, but every time you get there, it sucks. It's just the way it goes. Yeah. It, you're contributing is in a, is in a contribution. <laughs> yeah. So any questions tonight? I feel like a saltine. I got the, uh, the, eight, the uh, Adriatic is very salty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah. Um, so today we're in the church and we're, you know, being told about Peter should be warned and all that stuff and, and then the martyrs and their, their skulls and the bones. And um, I, I guess I'm curious about like how, how you respond to that because I, I'm like, this is all just, I, I would have previous to that been very moved and you know saddened and all of that stuff but I just kind of felt not much great <laughs> yeah but you got to see the art of it all oh, yeah. I mean that was pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I mean those people doing those, those designs on that tile mm -hmm. it's sort of like to me it's you ever see those uh, the, the exhibit of the monks the Tibetan monks that they start with all this colored sand and they do this incredible, you know, a mandala. Mm -hmm. They spend seven days putting this whole thing together and then the last day they just move all the sand. Yeah. yeah? That to me is how I see things like that. But that, today, that church was super cool. I put that skull thing as my homepage. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. Can you imagine? And then, oh, 200 years later, they made them saints. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, who felt that? <laughs> Those poor suckers. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> A little late. <laughs> Would have been nice if I got help earlier. <laughs> But it, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. And then the, I, the Baroque style the other day was mind-boggling. Oh, yeah. I mean, man, every place they could make something they did. That's awesome to me. Yeah. I don't know. I look at a lot of life like art myself. I think we're art projects. Really. And, there's, and the great joy is we can express it and observe it. Yeah. So we can express the art and also observe the art. So we can be like a, a very benevolent critic, hopefully, or an appreciation of the art and, and have the art made through us. That's beautiful, I feel. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And look at time. Time has a lot of aspects of beauty. You buy an orchid, it's, the bud's there for three months and then it opens up and it's mind boggling. And then it did, and it disappears. Could you imagine that they were always open all the time? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a lot of beauty can get pulled out through time, I feel. So, yeah, I think dreaming is, oh, it's, it's got a large palette. Yeah. Yeah, I feel. So, yeah. That's what I love about Italy and stuff. A lot of it, man. They've done, you know, they had a flair. 
for fucking making shit look like God. Uh, you know, it's pretty, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yep. I have a question. So, uh, I've taken, like, um, both times you told us about this 50.0001% and the shift happening. And then you said that, uh, well, you're not going to make the shift, but it's going to happen. It's, it, so yeah. I'm, my question is like, are we all that haven't experienced that shift? Are we all just waiting for grace? Or is there anything we can do to, uh, to uh, like, be available for the shift? Yes, to yes. Us? Well, I think a lot of times it will appear like there was a lot of do things done but it won't be how you thought it would be. Mm -hmm. In other words, I don't believe you're the doer, but I believe the doing that comes to you may be used in a way. Yes, I do. I believe that. I believe here, just like the idea in recovery, we have an idea of a higher power. And in the Course of Miracles, they have an idea of the Holy Spirit. And the way I understand it, and I'm not a student or a studier of the course uh, sounds works for me yeah and that is the Holy Spirit it takes the same information the brain is attempting to direct to the body which is said in the course the brain interprets to the body of which is, is a part so before it gets to that the Holy Spirit takes the same information and collates it differently and downloads it differently. So you get a whole different view from the same experiences, yeah? The same, what was in front of you that whole day will be seen in a completely different way through the lens of the Holy Spirit than the brain, or the whatever, yes? And then we have that with the higher power in AA. So the higher power is this feeling that something has done for you what you couldn't do for yourself. Yeah, and so you have a very, very obvious, very, very, very highlighted situation of, let's say, act of addiction. And therefore, the action addiction has tra triggered a lot of people wishing you to be sober. Your mother, you know, a lot of humans, a lot of people really wishing that you would be sober. And yet no human power seems to be able to do it. And then some, something happens where it's done. And you can't see any human fingerprints in it, on it. And therefore, the only logical expression would be, something has done for me what I can't do for yourself, for myself. So it's like a vague, it's not a God. It's just like, you know, praying into the air or something. But a gratitude comes over you. And you start feeling you live differently because now you feel like so, there's something in your life that's truly reliable, which is this higher power. And then you see the miracles b happening in other people's lives, getting through recovery, and you have countless of them in your life. And that faith in that gets galvanized, I feel. It gets to be like it has steel girder type thing because it's, you've witnessed it. You were in a condition where no human power could help you, and yet suddenly something helped you, unbelievably, yeah? And put an end to something that didn't seem to have any end, except a very bad one, yeah? Institution, jails, and death. So, uh, I mean, that could be more than enough for a person, or maybe they're gonna have to have 20 revelations, or maybe none, yeah? And if you want to call that grace, I, that, I like that term, yeah? Because I feel a whole lot goes on, uh, not by us, <laughs> tell you the truth, really, yeah? Yeah. And there's no way in non-duality, look at, have you ever read Hafiz and Rumi and those people? You know, the Mideast? Well, they they first of all, are incredible. To, to express the inexpressible through poetry is mind-boggling to me, really, really. And obviously, 
the, if you read them and stuff, they're super clear, yet how they paint it is the, they call it the beloved and this and shit, yes? And that's the art of this event, yeah? The absolute doesn't have to be seen as the absolute. It can be, it can be seen as the immediate grace of this moment, yeah? Or the beloved, or some intimacy of, of vast expanse, yeah? But an intimacy with vast expanse, yeah? Why would you want to put down the brush of this artistic event? Because of some fucking uh, fundamental view of non-duality. It's like non-duality Pharisees. Yes? Shit. This is very, this injects a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor. It's not an empty, stale uh, thing. It's very, it's got vivid colors. Yeah? Yeah, it makes nice splashes. Yeah. It's, it's freeing, not entertained or enjoyed by you. It's a freedom from that. It's so different. It's a relief from the need to be, to, for relief, really. Yeah, sometimes shit's bad. Yeah, it is. Sometimes this leg hurts, you know, it hurts. Yep, I'm in a position, I've got to walk. Would I rather not walk? Yeah, I would, but I don't seem to be able to not walk, so you just walk, yeah? I mean, obviously there's two sides of the coin here. Pleasure, pain, whatever. It's, there's never a, and no matter how t how many times you cut the coin, there's still two sides. You know. So this is about traveling lighter. It's not about everything's going to get great. It could, it may, but that's not the point. The point is you'll travel lighter with whatever it has in life has in store for you. That's the that's the deal. That's what I have seen through observing, as this expression. I've observed a traveling lighter that wasn't produced or mastered by Paul. It's been expressed through Paul and been observed by Paul, but it's not a product of Paul. I am super fucking clear about that. Yeah? And, it, and every day verifies it even more and more. So, yeah. This is where you speak from. You speak from, just like that's, there's a sense of this self, which is bogus, there's a true sense of what we are that isn't bogus. That has a fucking echo. It has some power. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Anyone else have a question? Anything? No? Well, that's great. We're going to have dinner soon, eh? What time is it now, hon? 8.10. 8.10, so now we can take a shower. That's good. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much.